Welcome back to Deep House with Larry White at the historic home of Sam and Alfreda Maloof in El Paloma, California. Lauren Verdugo, my assistant, is here with me today as we continue to explore those wonderful artifacts found in the Maloof collection. In today's ninth episode, we're going to check out one of Sam's most sculptural designs, an exquisite walnut cradle. All right, Larry, so for this episode, we're going to be talking about this uh, fabulous rocking cradle, but until then, we just migrated over here, wearing the same clothes, but talking about something <laughs> really cool, right? In the same yeah. room, master bedroom. Well, this is actually Sam's most sculptural design. It's his most expensive rocker. <laughs> and um, basically, during the time I worked with him, uh, I made nine of these for him. And this one came back to our collection because the client that we made him for, I made two of them for that client. He had mm -hmm. twin uh, sons, and he wanted each one of them to have one. And uh, ultimately, uh, he donated one back to our collection so we'd have one. So it's a great example of Sam's most sculptural endeavor, you know, the cradle. Definitely. Yeah. I heard that it takes six weeks to make each, like, a singular right. rocking cradle. And then you made nine of them. So were those back-to-back? Because -back? I have a... No. a that was spent over 22 years. Okay. You know, uh, for those of you who don't remember, I came back again to Sam in '92, and I spent another 22 years with him, right. and then with the foundation. Yeah, after teaching. the whole thing works out to be about 35 years or so. Wow. But during that course, I actually made nine of these for Sam, and uh, you're right, six weeks straight into it every day. Uh, there's a, a number of aspects of it that are kind of interesting. The, uh, the ribs are not steam bent. These are laminated ribs that are bent and compressed in a two-part mold. Uh, so we have five layers of 16 thin walnut strips that bend very easily. Mm -hmm. When you put glue on them, they're even more malleable. Right. They're compressed into a two-part mold that has a cardboard lining in it. So when you press it in, oh, cool. any irregularities are... Um, uh, taken care of by the cardboard, taking up the slack. That's interesting. I didn't yeah. know that. So anyway, rather than just make a set of ribs for a cradle, uh, one of the guys made up uh, about 50 ribs at oh a time. Gosh. And that way we can go through and pick out the grain on each rib oh, to fit. Okay. So what I do is technically what we wanted was the center ribs to be more vertical and then as they move towards the side, the grain would splay to the side. So what I would do is go through all the ribs and then put them in sets. And, so you would uh, have Take them together so they're mm -hmm. all matched with the color and grain. That's and really interesting. Yeah. So then when we make a trestle, once I get this done and start the basket, well, actually, I started the basket first. Uh, and once I uh, got the end pieces done and shaped so I could see the grain color and pattern, mm -hmm. then I would go to the sets of ribs and pick out the one that matched uh, the grain of the cradle. And so uh, what I would do is make the end pieces first and then glue the, the spline on the bottom, the keel we call it, uh, mm -hmm. and then the side rails go in. And then these ribs are fit each one individually to each space custom fit. So the ribs are just a little larger than the dado and then they're hand fit to that particular spot. So each rib gets three fittings um, before it can be glued up. So we got to so, make sure those babies are secure. Yeah, yeah they're secure. <laughs> so, so also when, when uh, you guys got an order for this, Sam would, would stop all the uh, chair orders to crank these out because babies come faster than well, people needing to sit. It was a priority. Yeah. Once, if I was working on a rocker when, when a, an order for a cradle came in, then I would stop that piece and immediately start working on the cradle. Yeah. And uh, as we know, that's an imperative to get it out on time. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings up another interesting point. Of all the furniture Sam made, these had the least duration of function of anything he made in terms wow. of the baby. Right. But the cool thing about it is when he would make a cradle for a family then that cradle would travel through the family and over generations. That's great. From the, one child to the next when they were ready. And, and so they have great history, you know, within the family context. Yeah. So uh, anyway, it's a, 
it's a really uh, exacting process to go through the shaping and keeping all the, the lines parallel and shaping the arcs that go in here, which are dissimilar dimensions uh -huh. and making it all read right all together. Yeah. So that's why it takes so much time. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is all of the ribs are kind of pre-sanded before they're glued up, but once they're glued up, it's all hand sanded, the basket wow. on the inside. You can't use a machine in there. Right, it'll um, totally tear yeah. it up. So uh, anyway, that's why it takes so long. All the details and the little uh, bits of uh, hard lines that are seen yeah. everywhere, I think it's great just because you know you see that in his furniture, but it's cool to see it in something else. Right, and it's it just has so much sculptural quality about it. Right. You know? And uh, the way uh, we would do the system up here is um, we drill a hole, um, a plug hole here, and then drill through um, and put a threaded insert in one half. Then there'd be a quarter inch machine bolt that would go through and screw into that with a spacer. And then that gets plugged over and that's what gives it the action. And what I would do on the, uh, the area where the machine screw goes through, uh, I'd put a, bra a bronze sleeve in there. Oh, okay. So that it doesn't wear the grain down. It always maintains integrity of the shape. Okay. Right, that's smart. Yeah. So there's just a lot of little things that go in. Well, in one thing that I really love that you probably wouldn't see unless you like, looked underneath it is this beautiful spine that it has going all Travels the way. Travels all the way. All the way around. Underneath um, and up the other side. Right. I don't know if you can see it clearly, but it's also right arced here. underneath. It's not going just straight through. across. Reminds me of a boat. Yeah. Well, it de definitely has that feel about it, you know. But beautiful piece. Well, great. So yeah. do you want to make another one? Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll make another one. <laughs>